I got a, some 12 gauge shotgun brushes to clean the rust out. Hey, you'd think after steam cleaning those things they'd be clean as could be, but they're still like black crap in there. Grease, oil. I have to spill water in that one. Lots of water. Lots of junk, too. Wow. Look at that one got cleaned at all. Okay, so I got the wire wheel and I'm cleaning up these upper and lower bores. <laughs> So I'm paying a lot of attention to these uh, uh, tapers here where the liner o-rings go down in because the last one, the third o-ring, is going to seal right at the base of this taper to keep the water away from the other two. That crap. Yeah, you can still see the machine marks around in here too. This is a really good block. Okay, I need to let the compressor build up, so I'm gonna run the holes. So Remember I was telling you about that tap? This is the tap that John Lindquist sent me. And uh, it's called a, what does that say, OSG? You see how the threads on that are not like a normal tap? So this is not going to cut the outside diameter of the V's on the threads. This is a cool thing. Um, this was, I got a whole package of these that my friends down at the Ford plant sent me. Okay, so these deals, Dan Kruer sent me these. Uh, Dan lives in Kentucky. Anyway, they have like a rubber deal in there so when you put these in they fit tight so it doesn't fall off. But anyway, these are awesome for driving square stuff like this.
get a wire brush clean those out those last bottom threads it really packs them okay uh, I'm gonna try to pull this shaft out of there I've always found they're not too hard to get out put a little heat on the block swell it up there we go need to reposition this a wee bit. This just doesn't seem like it's where it needs to be. There we go. This is another reason I took this out. You see all the water that came out of there? And then the possible contamination that can be inside of there, all the junk. Uh, there's a groove all the way around here for the oil to flow. Uh, because the way they install these, you got the, the oil hole here and then uh, I think your your main uh, supply hole is right here so like I said it's grooved but see it's clear full of water and guck I could get Brian Block to make me one of these I'll bet I'll bet he could whip that out pretty easy and harden it couldn't you Brian yes look at the see look at the crap coming out of it Yeah, so this is all the crap that's in that groove that the oil goes around. So if you've got some kind of big chunk of particle or something stuck in there from the machining process or whatever, you're never going to get it out of there. Once it goes down through this hole and into this groove in here, that's it. You're done. You're never going to get it out. Down there is that ball. You see the four stakes? That's all that... I mean, I don't know how tight that ball's pounded in there. But at, at this point, a guy could certainly melt it out of there with a torch, I think. And then you'd have to get in there with something, a drill, whatever, clean that chamfer up. Well, probably not a drill. I don't know what. You got any suggestions? That ain't gonna work. I got a piece of paint stripper. All day Sunday this block sat with paint remover on it. Got about 99% of the white off of it. There's still some blue Kenworth frame paint that's left on it. Um, so it has sat most of yesterday and last night in here with another coat of this paint softener. It's not like the old, you know, you buy aviation paint remover, holy moly. You gotta use that in a well vented, ventilated area. And I can't do that because it's cold here. So it ain't gonna work outside. So I'm reduced to using this kind of paint stripper, which is fine because it doesn't have chemicals in it. 
So that means I can go outside and steam clean it off and it's not an environmental issue. So anyway, getting ready to go out. We've got the forklift warming up. Gonna get the steam cleaner out running and blast that off and see if I can get the rest of the yellow off. Then I gotta turn the block over and get what's on the other side off. Quite a transformation, isn't it? Uh, that greasy old engine, now it's clean down to bare metal. Still got a few little places uh, with some paint on it, uh, but I got a plan to clean that up. So at this point, I think we're ready to go to the machine shop and get it decked. When it's done uh, with its decking, we'll bring it back, uh, get a thread chaser and chase every hole in it. I've already done the head bolts, uh, but all those 3 8 ones along the side, pan rail, everywhere else. Chase all the threads in those, uh, take it and uh, tape off the top with masking tape, the sides, all the oil parts will get taped off, uh, anything that I don't want damaged because uh, once it gets all taped off, I am going to take the sandblaster to it and finish cleaning it up. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make your own flapper wheel. So, I've already wore this one down. This is just a piece of brass welding rod and I cut a groove in it. And then, whatever size you want is going to depend on how long a piece of crocus cloth emery cloth you get. So all you do is get it started in this groove and I'm using this to clean the bolt holes and water holes out in this spacer plate. So you get it on there you just start winding her up. So I got a pretty pretty long piece this time because I'm going to try to do these big holes clean them out. Spacer plate's in good shape. You can still see the machine marks in it. So I'm not spending a thousand bucks on a new one. Looks like it might be a wee bit, yeah, she's a wee bit too big. So we gotta get it down, take some off. Yep, that's it. Voila, clean. Beautiful. That's bent, which causes it to vibrate. I need to build a new one. It's been dropped and bent. Kind of hard to straighten stuff out when it's like that. So you can still see the machine marks in here. Oh, I think that's a keeper. We'll go again. I've got my spacer plate all cleaned up. Uh, you can still see the machine marks in it. It's in good shape. The inside's cleaned up really nice. You can see the machine marks on those. Uh, I believe the last spacer plate I bought from Cat for one of these was a thousand bucks. So I'm glad I'm going to be able to use this one again. But Cats do not have counter bores. The liners sit flat on the deck and then the spacer plate goes on and makes up for the lack of a counter bore. Uh, I got my BK tool out. Uh, this tool, Blaine Keese made for me in Kansas. Uh, that's totally awesome, Blaine. Anyway, I even put BK tool on there. Now, I'm going to have to paint this yellow, Blaine, and probably put some de cat decals on it. But anyway, I'm moving right along, getting something done every day on this. Uh, we'll be showing you what counter bores are, what liner protrusion is, and why that's so important, and how you check it. So watch for that in the next video. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to another exciting 
exciting edition of the whiteboard. Uh, I want to introduce you to some of my awesome subscribers. Got a lot of them. Uh, Charles Lambeth, he's from Chandler, Texas. Thank you, Charles. Doug Russell from Manhattan, Kansas. Thank you, Doug. Tim Madden from Cocoa, Florida. Thank you, Tim. Mike Pedersen from Strum, Wisconsin. Thank you, Mike. And uh, Terry Martin, he's from Cleveland, Tennessee. Thank you, Terry. And Tommy Britton, he's from Forked River, New Jersey. Tommy sent me a D2 manual. And that's over here with the rest of the stuff on the desk, over, kinda over there. Anyway, thanks for that, Tommy. Anyway, you guys know the drill. You want a calendar, go to my store, www.jpaydirt.com. If uh, you go to my homepage on YouTube, and right up in the corner is the Facebook link, Instagram, and then there's this little square. Just click on that square, it'll take you to my store. For some reason, my icon's not there. You can go and get the hats. Uh, if you want a flex fit on the store, it says it's out of stock. No, it's not. You can go ahead and order that. If you want a swimsuit calendar, you can get those. And if you'd like a filthy horse silhouette, you can get those too. Anyway, thanks for uh, supporting me, buying stuff from me. That's totally awesome. Helps me make a few extra bucks. So I got a couple blocks laying there. Uh, the one is supposed to go to the machine shop. Um, there's a long story behind that. That should have been done a long time ago. Uh, but you are going to get to see that thing decked. Um, I'll be talking to the machinist, asking him questions. You'll get to see the machine, the process, the whole nine yards. And then I will let you know the rest of the story. Hello, Americans. Stand by for Jay Paydirt and the rest of the story. Uh, uh.